welcome friends to Across the Nanaverse. I'm really excited to finally do a video. It's been a while since I put one out. This video is about bony plots. I don't want you to waste your time. So if you don't really know what EIS or electrochemical impedance spectroscopy is, and you don't know what Nyquist plots are, I encourage you to go and watch my videos on those topics before you watch this one. The purpose of this video is just to introduce what a Bode plot is. I'll also share how I use Bode plots to look at data and when I use a Nyquist plot versus a Bode plot. Well, let's get started. Now this all starts with impedance and with EIS, we are measuring impedance. Impedance is the frequency dependent resistance of a given circuit element, like a resistor, a capacitor, an inductor, or a memristor. Typically in EIS, you apply a small amplitude, constant amplitude, AC signal, and you vary the frequency of that signal. And frequency is typically measured in Hertz. Introduction to engineering or physics courses definitely contain a component on an introduction to electricity or electricity and magnetism or electronics. And they often teach about resistance. They teach about resistance in the context of a flow of electrons. This is a type of impedance. However, when we look at electrochemical systems, we not only have resistance due to electrons, we also have resistance and impedances due to ions, which are charged atoms. For lithium ion battery, the lithium has its own impedance as it moves through the system. That impedance of a lithium ion is dependent on how fast the lithium is being pushed through to do chemical reactions or diffusion. And it also depends on where the lithium is inside of the battery. So in a wire, the electrons are being impeded just by scattering event against other electrons. But in electrochemical systems, there are different reactions taking place, different diffusions and desolvation processes that each have their own impedance. And they contribute to the individual ion impedance and thus the collective ionic impedances of the system. Bode plots are like Nyquist plots, but they allow you to look at the data differently so that you can understand your electrochemical system. Like I said earlier, during EIS, we're applying a small AC signal to our electrochemical system, and then we're receiving data about its impedance, and specifically in a signal, AC signal that comes back to us. And in this received AC signal, the measured AC signal, we're seeing a phase shift or a magnitude change depending on how that system is behaving. You can see in this graph here that you have a phase shift and a magnitude change in the amplitude of that receiving current. Now I encourage you to go back and watch my video on EIS if you wanna understand more about how that signal becomes a Nyquist plot, which is a plot in which you have on the Y axis the imaginary impedance and on the x-axis the real impedance of the system. But remember, in EIS we're providing a signal that has a wide range of frequency. And in a Nyquist plot, the frequency isn't very explicit. That's why we use a Bode plot. A Bode plot allows us to see the frequency and the phase and the magnitude of the impedance. So instead of the real impedance on the x-axis, we get the log of the frequency of the applied signal. And on the y-axis, we can do the phase of the signal or the imaginary impedance or the real impedance or the total impedance of the system. You can choose whatever feature you would like to look at and compare against the different frequencies. So for both a Bode plot and a Nyquist plot, you can resolve different charge transfer processes. Although for a Bode plot, it's more easy to resolve these processes since with a Nyquist plot, often smaller processes are overwhelmed by very large resistive processes. In a Bode plot, the frequency is explicit, but in a Nyquist plot, it's less clear what frequencies we're looking at. To compare Bode plots and Nyquist plots, I have a few points. For both, individual charge transfer processes are easily resolvable. But they're easier to see in a Nyquist plot than a Bode plot because you have that clear semicircle. In a Bode plot, frequency is explicit, but in a Nyquist plot, it's less obvious. And another benefit of Bode plots is that if you have very small impedances in your system, then they won't be swapped out 
provide larger impedances like you can see in a Nyquist plot. As a scientist, when I'm looking at my EIS data, I like to look at both the Nyquist and the Bode plots of the data so that I see the full picture of what's going on. It really depends on what questions you're trying to answer as far as which graph is most beneficial. I find that often we come up with theories and hypotheses as far as what processes go on at which frequencies inside of an electrochemical system, and so a Bode plot can be a great tool in order to pinpoint those specific frequencies you want to investigate. Thanks for watching. I hope this helps you in your data analysis or research and you make an incredible breakthrough using this information. If you like this video and want more, like and subscribe to my channel. Feel free to reach out to me on Instagram or LinkedIn. I'm always happy to connect with other scientists or electrochemist enthusiasts. So this is my ukulele collection. I have three ukuleles as you can see. This one's more of a toy. This one's my legit ukulele and this one's a baritone I got on Amazon, I think, a few years ago. But I have it tuned like this one because I don't want to learn new finger positions. <laughs> so as you make the string shorter, the frequency increases. And this is a small amplitude. And this is a large amplitude and frequency. It's all connected. I mean, you could make a Bodhi plot of ukulele sound. That could be interesting. This is a demonstration of the AC signal applied to an electrochemical system during EIS. Uh, the, the amplitude changed. I can't keep the amplitude constant though. Amplitude starts high and then it goes low, so that's not exactly what we want.